Subtle ticks and quirks are an easy way for filmmakers and actors to make their characters feel truly alive, rather than simply props for the sake of telling a story. And while character traits are usually obviously laid out for the audience to easily digest, say Tony Stark's fondness for eating in the middle of a conversation, sometimes directors can imbue their films with a more impressively low-key brand of character development. These 10 films, all terrific works in their own right with brilliantly defined characters, nevertheless dare to take things a step further by rewarding those few audience members who really pay close attention. It's entirely possible to watch these movies dozens of times and never pick up on these below-the-radar character flourishes, adding inessential yet undeniably intriguing shade to characters you're probably already huge fans of. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 surprising movie character traits everyone missed. Number 10. Elastigirl speaks out of the right side of her mouth, just like Holly Hunter, The Incredibles. The Incredibles' Elastigirl is of course voiced by the brilliant Holly Hunter, whose distinctive drawl is a perfect fit for the series' stretchy superheroine. But Hunter's recognizable twang is actually a byproduct of her tendency to speak from the right side of her mouth, due to a childhood case of the mumps rendering her deaf in her left ear. Brilliantly, Pixar actually decided to incorporate this physical aspect of Hunter's vocal performance into Elastigirl herself. And so, those who pay close attention will notice that Helen Parr is animated to speak from the right side of her mouth. It's easy to completely ignore this if you're well accustomed to Hunter's voice, but it's yet another incredible testament to Pixar's ludicrous attention to detail. Number 9. David Never Blinks – AI Artificial Intelligence Hayley Joel Osment gives a heartbreakingly terrific performance in AI as David, a childlike android programmed with the ability to love, and a corrector who original director Stanley Kubrick initially believed no actual child actor could believably play. And yet, Osment's remarkably nuanced performance totally sells the audience on his uncanny nature, perhaps defined best by subtler physical tics which most audience members wouldn't ever consciously pick up on. In addition to teaching himself a stiffer posture, Osmond also suggested to director Steven Spielberg that David should never be seen blinking, and so undertook the challenge to never once blink during a take. And indeed, throughout the entire film, you'll never see David blink. Which is actually pretty ironic considering the obvious advanced technology involved in bringing David to life, and how comparatively simple a blinking routine would clearly be. Nevertheless, on some level, it gets into the audience's mind that something's a bit off about David, and this certainly helps hammer that home. Of working under such conditions, Osmond said it was hard not to blink because robots always keep their eyes open. The trick is not to think about it a lot. After the first week, I didn't blink even after they yelled cut at the end of a scene. Now that is dedication. Number 8. Kyle Reese's Unique Relationship with Dogs – The Terminator One of the subtler aspects of the Terminator series' lore is revealed in the very first movie, when Kyle Reese's flashback to the future war shows the resistance fighters using dogs to detect Terminators. Not only do the canines bark when an infiltrator is near, but it's shown that human soldiers got into the habit of offering their hands to the dogs upon returning to base in order to verify their identity. In a sly callback, or call forward, whatever you want to call it, Kyle shows just how deeply entrenched this habit is when he goes to the Tiki Motel with Sarah Connor midway through the movie. At the check-in desk, he sees a dog and instead instinctively offers his hand to it to sniff. Sure, Reese is perhaps just practicing good manners with a dog, but knowing the crucial role the animals play in the future war, it's impossible to remove his actions from that wider learned context. Number 7. Baby reads the kid's menu because of his childhood trauma. Baby Driver. You can always trust an Edgar Wright movie to be full of neat little details. His action thriller Baby Driver features a memorable scene between getaway driver Baby and waitress Deborah in a diner, where Deb informs a flustered baby that he's actually looking at the kid's menu much to his embarrassment. We've all been there. While viewers might initially assume this to be a throwaway moment intended solely to show how preoccupied Baby is, it actually confirms just how thoroughly traumatized Baby still is from the childhood car accident which killed his parents. It's basically a subtle visual cue to imply Baby's arrested development, stuck in the habit of a child, made all the more devastating given that Dem not only works in the diner just as his mother did, but even bears a decent physical resemblance to her. On the other hand, and perhaps this is also just right being a little playful, because it's only fitting that a guy called Baby would look at the kids' menu, right? Number 6. Pennywise changes his eye colour to put his victims at ease. It. 
Despite initial skepticism about Bill Skarsgård's ability to live up to Tim Curry's chilling prior portrayal of Pennywise the Dancing Clown, he did an exemplary job, aided of course by the tireless efforts of the entire lavish production. Perhaps the most interesting character trait of the child-eating villain is displayed in his very first scene, where he preys upon doomed young Georgie. While desperately attempting to present an affable demeanor to Georgie after first startling him, Pennywise's signature yellow eyes change color to a more inviting blue. However, there's an added layer to this deception as made clear in Stephen King's novel. He switches to a blue eye color because it's the very same color eyes as Georgie's brother and mother. At even an unconscious level, this puts Georgie at greater ease with Pennywise as he attempts to lure him in. And of course, it totally works. Number 5. Charlie says definitely a lot, just like his brother, Rayman. Dustin Hoffman won the Best Actor Oscar for his sublime performance as Raymond Babbitt in Rayman, a character defined by many memorable traits, not least his incessant use of the word definitely. But before his self-serving younger brother Charlie even meets Raymond, there's an early nod to repeat viewers that the two are siblings. When Charlie learns that most of his father's $3 million estate is going to Raymond, at the time an unknown beneficiary, he repeatedly invokes the word definitely also. It means nothing to people watching Rayman for the first time, naturally, but makes for one hell of a penny dropping moment on a repeat viewing that both brothers, estranged as they are, share such a specific language based tick. Number 4 Marla Singer's bad makeup informs her character, Fight Club. Fight Club's Marla Singer is unquestionably the character of Helena Bonham Carter's career, a deeply disturbed yet compulsively watchable human train wreck hurled headlong into David Fincher's masterful thriller. And though the film is absolutely jam-packed with brilliantly subtle moments of character work, perhaps one of the most unfortunately unspoken is something as simple as Marla's makeup. There's no mistaking Marla's careless, grungy sense of style throughout the film, topped off by her smoky-eyed makeup in particular. To achieve this look, Carter asked her makeup artist to apply all of her facial slap with her non-dominant hand, in order to ensure it retained a rough-hewn, uneven quality. The end result certainly speaks for itself, and like other entries on this list, it's a subtle character morsel which says a lot about who Maria is without having to actually say anything at all. Number 3. Tony Montana's Poor Dinner Etiquette Scarface Scarface isn't a movie full of subtleties. Its strength lies more in its shameless, stylish aggression, accentuated by Al Pacino's thermonuclear performance as Cuban refugee turned drug lord Tony Montana. But there is one below the radar character beach which says a lot about who Tony is, when he and Omar head to Bolivia to meet with cocaine kingpin Sosa. After dinner, the men are brought lemon water for washing their hands, but an oblivious Tony immediately grabs the lemon slice and bites into it, unaware of what it's actually intended for. Though we as the audience are of course already acutely aware of Tony's humble origins and social status, it's nevertheless an amusing character trait to underline how much of a fish out of water he truly is in this situation, no matter his ambition. Number 2. Bane Loves to Knit – The Dark Knight Rises Tom Hardy did a remarkable job of bringing Bane to life in The Dark Knight Rises. No matter that the majority of the character's face is covered, and we're privy to only small morsels of information about his backstory and personality. But nothing the character gets up to in the movie proves more peculiar than his baffling decision to randomly knit on occasion, all the more so as it's easy for audiences to watch the film time and time again without ever noticing. It's most easily noticed during the kangaroo court scene late in the movie, and while it's never explained beyond being a mere character eccentricity, it's actually one of the film's many references to Charles Dickens' classic novel A Tale of Two Cities. Bane is actually playing homage to the book's villain Madame Defarge, who herself has a fondness for knitting, even if it's more likely to just confuse casual viewers who happen to notice it. Number 1. Hal Cheats at Chess 2001 A Space Odyssey Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey is an all-timer sci-fi classic for many reasons, not least the presence of its villainous malfunctioning computer HAL 9000. If HAL serves as David Bowman's opposition throughout the film, the computer's greater sense of duplicity is hinted at prior when it takes on Dr. Frank Poole in a game of chess. The match ends with HAL's victory, naturally, though those who pay extremely close attention to the scene will notice that HAL actually cheats in order to win. He tells Poole 
Liverpool? I'm sorry, Frank, I think you missed it. Queen to bishop 3, bishop takes queen. Knight takes bishop, mate. Prompting Poole to resign the game without questioning Hal. But in actual fact, Hal should have said queen to bishop 6 which would have allowed Poole to continue playing a short while longer, even if Hal's victory was more or less inevitable either way. Given Kubrick's penchant for infuriating attention to detail in his movies, it's unlikely this was a simple mistake. More likely, it was a concerted attempt to sow the seeds of Hal's malfunction, albeit subtly enough that only seasoned chess players would likely ever notice it, and even then probably assume it was just a continuity error.